Hello, my name is Christine and I run a vintage shop called Prima Treasures on Etsy. Today I'm going to talk to you about a company called Chase Brass and Copper. And the reason I wanted to talk to you about them is that they are what is considered a period art deco company, which means that they were making art deco items during the period that is considered art deco. So it's not something that it looks art deco that was made after the Art Deco period. Anyway, the reason I wanted to talk about Chase is because they can be quite difficult to collect. Um, I believe over the eight years that I've been doing this, I've had maybe four items that I was able to sell in my store. So it can be difficult to find them. But this past weekend, I got extremely lucky and found myself in an estate sale where someone was clearly a collector and had a wide variety of items made by Chase. So this seemed like, you know, my big opportunity to share this company with you guys and help you learn a little bit more about it because I finally have a decent number of items that I can feature in a video. So you can see from the collection that I have here that um, a good number of the items they made were chrome and I'll walk you through the ones that I have. Uh, this right here is considered a little nut, nut dish or mint dish and it's got two compartments so you could put nuts in one side and little mints in the other. And then this one I found in an old advertisement and it was being used as an ice bucket. So it doesn't really look like an ice bucket the way we think of them. And you could, obviously, you could just use it as a serving bowl if you wanted to, but I guess as far as they were concerned, this was an ice bucket. But you can see both of these pieces in particular have this cool uh, handle, curved handle. This one is in a full circle, and this one is just curved up and then has a loop on it. But they both have this ribbed design on the handles. And uh, if we move over to the centerpiece, this is actually a cocktail pitcher and it also has a rib design on it and then on the other side of that we also have a cocktail shaker which doesn't have the same rib design but it does have these uh, black bands around it at the top and bottom so in terms of identifying deco pieces this sort of um, banded or ribbed design tends to be a common theme and you can even see it over here at the far left where we have the copper piece. I only have two copper pieces, but I wanted to include them just to make it clear that they did make pieces in copper and even in brass. I personally haven't seen a brass one, but um, you could see at the very far left, I have a collector's book for Chase and there are brass pieces on the cover. So uh, because their name was brass and copper, they did do brass, but at I assume those pieces are very hard to get because I haven't seen one myself. Um, and the copper is not super easy to get either. Um, so the chrome seems to be the most prolific of the various wares that they made. And mostly what they made was um, housewares. They actually started as more of an industrial company. And then at in the early 1930s, they... Um, acquired another company and they kind of shifted into what they were calling giftware, which was basically housewares, you know, uh, serving items, that kind of thing. Um, so they did that through the 30s, which, you know, the Great Depression hit. So a lot of the items that they made in the early 30s are hard to find because, you know, people weren't spending money on stuff like this. And then Unfortunately, they got double whammied in the 40s when the um, World War II started and a lot of companies, especially companies that made metal products, were asked to shift to war production and had to cease making, you know, whatever consumer goods they were previously making. And Chase was one of those companies that had to shift to wartime production. And from what I read, they didn't really recover after that. So by the time you get into the mid and late 40s, they pretty much um, had gone back to their more industrial roots and were no longer making uh, giftware items anymore. So the thing that's interesting about Chase is that they actually um, hired freelance designers to help design the products that they sold 
And so various items from their catalog, like this piece or the cocktail shaker, were actually made by or designed by well-known designers. And so they would even feature that in their advertising to let customers know, hey, you know, this, you know, big designer uh, designed this piece for us. So that's another one of the things that makes Chase collectible is that you also have people who are interested in these particular designers who are finding themselves looking at Chase items as a way to get yet another piece for their collection that was made by a designer they, they happen to like. So I think these things uh, that are made by Chase, and I hope you can see just by looking at them, um, they have a very Art Deco look. You can see that even the rounded pieces are um, very clean lines and very simple designs. They're not overly ornate, really um, kind of minimalist in that way. And so the fun thing I think about Art Deco is that we could put it in our house today and I don't think anyone would think anything of it. I mean, if they were, they were making these things in the 30s, you're talking about having an item that is technically an antique because an anything over 75 years old it can be considered an antique and some of these things are probably 80 to 90 years old so it the the idea that you could have something that's an antique in your house but it would fit in nicely with modern stuff that we find in the stores now I think it's kind of cool and so I feel like Art Deco is one of the design styles that you can get into without making your house look, you know, like you just fell into the granny store or something. Because, you know, stuff like this would absolutely fit in with modern decor. So anyway, um, I hope you learned something about Chase and Art Deco today. And I appreciate you watching. And hopefully I will have something new for you next week.